there are an awful lot of what is referred to as factor investing occurring these days. Uh, I think the issue is really simple. People have to understand what a factor model is, and all it is is a list of characteristics that says these securities are similar. So we could be talking about the PE ratio of stocks, we could be talking about the credit rating of bonds, but just a set, a list of items that make securities similar. And the issue is very simple. Um, if I understand how securities are more or less similar to one another, I understand which securities will behave more alike or more differently. It turns out, under a lot of capital market theory, that when I run the risk of having a bunch of securities uh, behave in a certain common way, that I get rewarded for that. And so if I'm willing to live with those risks, I get the commensurate return associated with it. The question for investors today is, given relatively low liquidity in many markets, how do we invest in a way which provides returns above the most basic type of investing while not having a high liquidity requirement, which traditional active management does? The traditional view of diversification is that you diversify a portfolio by company name or issuer name in the fixed income world. It turns out that really doesn't work. Uh, the reason being that uh, what is driving the performance of many securities is not idiosyncratic, is not specific to a particular firm or bond issuer. It is related to some common factor, some common event. For example, uh, you wouldn't think that Exxon would have much to do with the real estate markets. On the other hand, if I said, uh, how are luxury homes doing in Houston, Texas? Uh, it turns out that it's very closely correlated with how major oil companies are doing and how profitable they are. So we need to be able to understand what is driving these processes, whether it be interest rates, energy costs, various kinds of macro events, they may be legislative events. Uh, Congress can change tax laws to make entire industries more or less profitable. That's the kind of thing that's not name specific or issuer specific, but has impact across a broad range of securities. So diversifying simply by, I own 50 different companies just isn't good enough. There's a lot of talk about this in the industry right now, especially around uh, pension funds and state managed funds. They're, they're expected to do a, a lot more with less. There's a lot less alpha available in the market than there used to be, especially around the equity and fixed income areas that traditionally portfolio managers were looking to these areas to provide, uh, to provide positive alpha for themselves. Now what they're looking for are probably entering more risky areas especially with pension funds, is they need to find more or new sources of revenue outside the traditional areas. They're looking at the more risky assets. So now they have to probably venture into a new spot, into more risky derivatives, et cetera, to provide the, uh, the positive flow that they need to pay for their increasing need for you know, positive inflows into their funds. So now these risk platforms are more important than they've ever been. They uh, need to provide information to these portfolio managers to go ahead and, and find these areas that are going to be the least of the riskiest for themselves to be able to go and find that unknown uh, revenue source that they can get to before. And even with pressures now uh, you know, coming from the passive funds that they're all these low fee, low cost funds, it's even more. So the competition between these different portfolio managers is larger than it's ever been. So now you're going to see you know, more of these traditional uh, active funds that was state equities and fixed income drift more into the derivative space. Well, I'll highlight one of the challenges, something that Pat mentioned, is doing more with less. That's a pretty pervasive issue in the industry right now, and it encompasses a lot of the challenge itself. So, for example, uh, firms no longer have the luxury of buying multiple disparate solutions, point solutions, and then integrating them together. Just the cost and uh, headache of maintaining those integrations is just not, not valuable anymore. They're really looking for a single provider, a single solution that provides complete end-to-end -end functionality across the front and middle office. 
something that can really tie together everything up front from portfolio construction, portfolio analytics, risk, performance measurement, all the way through to trading. So it, really people are looking, firms are looking for a single integrated solution. They're also looking for a solution, a single solution that can handle mostly multi-asset portfolios, which is, as we know, a growing trend. No longer can you have a separate system for each asset class. The other things people are looking for is really, they're looking for solutions that can help automate and provide more efficiency, so really exception-based workflow solutions. So a lot of the, the basic tasks are automated, and it's just uh, you can manage the, the, the process with fewer personnel. That helps with the increasing pressure. Um, they're, they're also looking for tools that replace manual processes related to that, things that we touched on earlier, like spreadsheets. We really have to get rid of spreadsheets and manual workarounds and processes and focus on the end-to-end -end solution. Uh, providers, uh, providers can also add capability around collaboration. Many firms have to work across location and asset classes. And so collaboration is important. For example, the growing trend of generics, where a fixed income portfolio manager or an equity portfolio manager is signaling intent or interest in a generic security, the trader then has to take, pick that up and purchase or buy an, a specific security. So see, these are some of the challenges that we see and then some of the, the implications on some of the technology.